welcome to the Essex Artist Spotlight. We're here with Joe Stewart, Studio 234. Joe, thanks for taking the time to share with us today. Glad to have you here. Hey, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, well, my work background is uh, I've recently retired from the construction business. I own a, a custom building company uh, for about the last 50 years. But I've always been interested in making things and, uh, and crafts in general. Uh, so painting seemed to be a, a logical step forward. Uh, I'm, I'm married to Jill Horn, who's an artist here at Essex. And um, we met about 18 years ago and she talked me into taking lessons. And so I took lessons from Steve Jenkins over at Baker Hunt. Uh, Steve is also an artist here at Essex, and um, painting's gotten into my blood, and so here I am, all these years later, still making art. Or Absolutely. Hopefully people and think it it's art. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Uh, how did you come up with your style of art? Um, I think I could be considered more of a classic art, uh, oil painter, certainly not a contemporary, uh, or, you know, I, I really could, I, I grew up looking at the golden uh, age of art in Cincinnati. You know, we have a wonderful history of artists in this town. And uh, we, I grew up in a house where we had a, a lovely Potast, Edward Potast painting over the mantel, uh, which is, he's one of Cincinnati's most famous painters. And I just uh, have always loved oil painting. Uh, but my specialty is really more painting wild places. Uh, I like to go out and paint outside. I do plein air painting. And in, in many cases, I use the plein air field studies as a uh, reference for larger paintings. Um, this painting right here is a painting of a waterfall in, on the Osable River in upstate New York. And I, uh, I go up there and paint with a group of painters in the spring. Uh, this was, I've done it for seven years now. We just had our 10th anniversary. I wasn't there for the first couple of years. But this is a larger painting of a waterfall there on the Osable River that uh, was painted from reference material, which is photographs and uh, plein air studies, if you will. All right, so th this is a, uh, a field study. It was done on site at the river's edge. and. Um, this is a piece of this waterfall, and I've painted it at this, at this site maybe seven or eight different times. And when I came back from the Adirondacks this uh, summer, I decided to, to do a larger painting that took in the entire waterfall. So that's, a, that's something that I typically like to paint. And um, if you look around, there's, this is another uh, piece of that same waterfall. And... Um, so you're kind of sectioning out the same same scenery, just different viewpoints and vantage? Right. Yeah. So um, that brings me to my next question. Tell us a little bit about your process. Like when you decide to do it, do you have specific locations already in mind? Or once you once you do it and you start to put, you know, pencil to paper, what, what do you actually, how do you form it out? Well, um... I usually, if I set up outside, I, I do a quick thumbnail sketch or two to uh, take in the parameters of what I'm trying to paint. Because if you're looking at the great outdoors and you say, well, I want to paint that scene, you have to crop it into some sort of a composition. So I start with a, with a, field, uh, with a sketch, uh, and then I will um, set up my easel and attempt to paint the scene. Plein air painting, uh, if you're lucky, you've got two to three hours before everything changes, and, and so you have to right. get it down quickly. Absolutely. So um, tell us a little bit about the advantages of being at the Essex and, and having other artists to kind of spin ideas off of. Yeah. Tell us a little well, bit about that. Well, the Essex is just a fabulous place, and I think it's one of those hidden gems in Cincinnati. Uh, I don't know how many studios are in the building. I think it's close to 200. Yes. And there are just a boatload of uh, very talented people here doing all sorts of different creative endeavors. And um, so that, that vibe kind of permeates the space. And uh, Trent Hyman, who is our landlord, 
has uh, done a really good job of offering spaces at a reasonable price that an artist can afford. So, yeah, he does a good job of pointing out areas that I know he's full right now, but of, of trying to fit the, the space with the artist and what they might, their needs. So that's correct. He does a good job. He does an excellent job. And uh, so uh, I've got this space about three years ago when we were downsizing and I needed a place to store my, uh, my tools and workbenches and different things. So, uh, so I've been here about three years, but I didn't actually occupy until uh, January of this year. So I'm fairly new here, but uh, I love. I come here pretty much every day, and this is w what I do. I spend my time here. I have some other interests uh, that are more on the craft side or furniture restoration that I also do here in the studio. Yeah, it's a great stress relief too. <laughs> it's so much less stressful than the building business. Absolutely, <laughs> being on budget and on time and working with people. I mean, it's a it's wonderfully fulfilling to give somebody their dream home, but it's, but you know when you've got to do it for a price and a time, it's, it's a little stressful. Right. So right. I'm enjoying having less stress. So now, I always ask this, what would you say to aspiring artists, somebody just getting into it, you know, before they've ta taken classes or anything, they're just kind of starting out, what, what's just a, a little advice you'd give them? Well, um, usually if somebody is going to, to pursue art, it's in their blood and they're not going to be discouraged easily and I think that that's an important lesson. Um, this, you know, painting doesn't come overnight, it takes work, mm -hmm. it takes hours and hours at the easel. So I would say, you know, be patient and just uh, enjoy the ride, you know, it's yeah. all about the process. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Joe, thanks for taking the time to share with us once again and thanks for being part of the Essex. It's always great to have you here and great talking to you. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Yep.